Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Before we start the porcelain procedure, it's important to have a smile analysis. A smile analysis checks the relationship of the lips and the soft tissue to the teeth. We may elect to do some cosmetic electrosurgery. Once this is done, then we can start the procedure of preparing the teeth. We have tetracycline staining on all the maxillary teeth, and we're going to prepare porcelain laminates on these teeth. You'll notice that the purpling tends to be at the gingival, so we'll have a heavier masking on our laminates when we have those fabricated. We we'll require a depth cut going down the labial surface here, and then uh, a cervical finishing line, and that will go into the interproximal. And when we're finished with that, then we'll tissue pack and drop this finishing line down just a little bit farther because of the graying. If this were not tetracycline, then we would leave the margin about a half a millimeter above the soft tissue. But in this instance, we need to bring it under the soft tissue so there, that we can mask out that purple color. And so on all of these, we'll be preparing a vertical depth cut that will be about five tenths of a millimeter. That's where this pencil mark is. And once that is prepared, we then will reduce that labial surface into the interproximal, preparing a chamfer along the periphery of the entire tooth. I'd like to show you the occlusion. Can you close your teeth slowly? Open again. Close again. And open. It is a good idea to take a shade of the teeth beforehand, and we have determined that we will be using an A1 shade for the uh, central incisor and lateral incisor, and a D2 shade for the cuspids, which will give us a gradual transition then to the darker posterior teeth. And you will see when we are bonding these, how we will make a gradual transition from the lighter central to the darker cuspid. The initial cut will be made with this tapered diamond with the, the rounded end, as you see here. This will be followed with a carbide that has the same shape. It's almost too much water, is it? You're going to feel the vibration, but you shouldn't feel any pain involved in it. Okay. So what we have done now is we've made our initial tracer cut and you can see the extent of that tracer cut. I'll try to show the edges of it. And that's a half a millimeter deep. Not very deep. And now we will take that same diamond and make a chamfer at the cervical, going into the interproximal, and we'll then do that on the rest of the remaining teeth.
what I have to do is make a little one like that, Mike. Uh, just across the uh, labial, so just to give me a, a little bit of an idea. I'm just trying to make a, a little bit of a chamfer going into the interpoxal space here. A little bit of a chamfer. And she's got a little space there anyway. So here, and then I bring this across and take take that to the depth of my depth cut here. And what the pencil line does, as soon as I and I'm moving that pencil line, I know I'm, I'm at the proper depth, you see? So that, that gives a clue to me that uh, I'm, I'm at the right depth then. Because when you're looking at white on white here, it's a little hard to, to know about where you're going. The next step is to tissue pack. We're using a fine braided ginger pack to expose the tooth under the soft tissue so we can place our finishing line in an area where we will not show the gray of the tooth. Okay, the tissue cord has been in for five minutes and we're about to remove that. This Brassler finishing carbide then uh, has the same configuration as a diamond but does the final polishing, smoothing the enamel on the labial surface and also refining the cervical chamfer finishing line. Okay, we're going to, now you can see the area of enamel that we have exposed with our tissue pack and now we're going to bring the finishing line up just a little bit farther. Okay, get that. The teeth are again carefully tissue packed to expose the finishing line under the soft tissue. After five minutes, the tissue pack now is being removed prior to taking the impression.
polyvinyl siloxane impression material is carefully injected into the interproximals and under the soft tissue. The heavy body material then is placed over the injection material and allowed to set. This is then removed and inspected. There should be a clean, clear finishing line around all of the teeth. It's especially important that the finishing lines are intact. If this is correct, then this will be sent to the laboratory. The polished teeth then serve as a temporary. The porcelain laminates have been returned from the laboratory now, and we're inspecting them. You'll notice that there are tabs on the incisor laminates. These tabs are placed there to keep the a laminate from going too far to the cervical to give it a definite seat. They are not etched and they will be ground off once the laminate has been placed in the mouth. And you can see the configuration of the tab that will definitely hold the laminate in place. The opposite side has been frosted with hydrofluoric acid and you can see the frosted appearance on that portion of the laminate. And I will turn it over so you can see the color that has been added. There has been a great deal of chroma added to this and also an opaque so that the purplish color is masked out in the porcelain laminate. Also, surface texture has been added. Now we are going to add some water to the laminate and try it in place to check the color. By adding water, uh, this will give the color of a neutral or untinted laminate resin. Now all the laminates are in place with uh, water. You can also use glycerin or water. You can see the tabs that allow the complete seating of this without seating too far to the cervical. And also you can see the soft tissue. Sometimes the soft tissue, like on this cuspid, will keep it from seating all the way. On the incisal, you can see the remaining gray color and also the tabs as they go over the lingual incisal surface, holding these laminates in a definite position. You can see on the cuspids how we have gone over the lingual surface to allow a little more strength on the cuspid teeth. All of the anterior teeth are again tissue packed prior to the bonding of the porcelain laminate. The resin that we're using for bonding the laminates with this particular case is the Kerr Porcelite resin bonding porcelain veneer cement. Let me show you the components of the kit. The kit contains a silene agent, and the silene is a two-step process uh, in that you place the phosphoric acid on the etched porcelain for 90 seconds, and then on that drop the silene solution for an additional 60 seconds, then it is rinsed. Once it has been prepared, then the Kerr bondite is mixed and that is placed on the etched tooth and also the etched porcelain that has been silenated. As far as the resin itself, I'd like to show you the individual resin cements. The kit comes with six resins that satisfy 
different situations as far as color is concerned. The most popular resin is the untinted. The untinted resin is used when the porcelain laminate is tried in with either glycerin and water or saliva or water. Uh, that shade will close, most closely match the untinted resin. The next most popular resin then is the universal. This picks up a little bit of the Denton color. The four remaining are used in special situations where you need a little more yellow, gray-brown, yellow-brown, or an opaquer, which is sometimes useful when we're trying to mask out stained teeth. The bonding resins can further be modified with a tints, and the command ultrafine color shade modifiers can be uh, used. Uh, and uh, here we have a, a whole range of color modifiers that can be added. A word of caution, however, no more than 25% of the mix should contain these modifiers, or else the resin cement will become very, very weak. So remember that only 25% of these modifiers uh, should be used. After the laminates have now been cleaned in an ultrasonic cleaner, then the laminates are silanated. First we start by putting phosphoric acid on for 90 seconds. Then a silane material is placed directly over the phosphoric acid, and this is left on for 60 seconds. This is the only kit, the Kerr kit, that silanates in this manner. Then the laminates are rinsed in water for 60 seconds. Phosphoric acid gel is placed on the teeth, and this is left on for 60 seconds. The bonding agent is applied to the etched teeth. And notice we're using shim stock as a matrix. This keeps a light from going through and exposing any excess and curing excess on the other teeth. Uh, the laminate has been now treated with silane and also has been treated with the bonding agent. Next we will place the untinted resin on the surface and then that will be placed in the mouth. We are placing the loaded laminate on the tooth, incisal first, gently seating it, forcing the excess out. A brush is used then to take the excess away from the cervical, and then the laminate is then gently seated, and more excess is removed. Excess is taken away from the incisal. Floss can be used to take excess away on the interproximal. It's cured on the incisal, and then the cervical excess is removed again, and then the cervical is cured after this excess is removed. Now we are applying the bonding agent to the other lateral and central incisor. The laminates are gently seated, and then the excess will be removed again with a brush after they're seated completely, and curing the incisal, and then removing excess from the cervical, and then curing the cervical. and curing from the lingual. Now, you can see the tabs, and there's an excess material on the cervical that will be cleaned up later 
The cuspids have not been bonded yet. We have a little spot where we have etched and missed, and so we're adding a little bit of etchant to spot etch with a broken cotton swab handle. This is left on only for 30 seconds. The bonding agent is being applied after the tooth has been rinsed from the gel. Excess is now being removed after the laminate has been seated. And the same procedure is followed. Turn from the incisal, lingual, and cervical. The Braster Company makes a diamond kit that has in it extra fine diamonds. This happens to be the ET3. And this diamond is good for removing excess resin at the cervical after the resin has been cured. It also has a very fine tip that goes into the inner proximal that is good for removing excess porcelain and finally polishing it with their fine grit. The football shaped finishing diamonds are useful for removing the tabs and finishing the incisal and lingual portion of the porcelain laminates. And here we have a fine and an extra fine for doing the uh, final finishing and polishing. Also, the Shofu porcelain polishing uh, rubber wheels can be used for finishing and polishing of the porcelain. And sometimes the 3M discs for finishing composites can be used for areas that have easy access. The final polishing is done with a diamond polishing paste. And this paste here happens to be the Denmat porcelain laminate a polishing paste that's uh, dispensed on a rubber cup and used to polish any surfaces that we have ground and repolished. This will give a nice lifelike luster to the porcelain again. At this point we let the happy patient see her laminates. It must be explained that the tissue is a little irritated because of the tissue packing. One week later, we observe the patient. Notice how nicely the tissue is adapted to the laminates. The patient has been taking good care of the oral hygiene. And you notice that the gingiva looks healthy, good plaque control, and the gingiva is snugged down nicely over the porcelain laminates. It's important that the patient floss carefully and brush carefully without irritating the soft tissue. Take a look at the lingual, you'll notice how nicely the incisal edges and the porcelain blend into the lingual surface. We can run the explorer back and forth and not feel the margin. You notice on the cuspid, we've gone over the incisal edge. From the side you can see the profile, that the laminates are not excessive, they're not bulky, they fit in naturally as we look at the, the profile and how nicely they fit into the soft tissue. By preparing teeth, you can get these kinds of contours. The patient is happy, and these laminate should give us many years of good service. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.